Hello everyone, I'm Xiaoyang. I'm from Florida State University. So today I'm going to talk about the representations, metrics, and the statistics for shape analysis of elastic graphs. This is the joint work with my advisor, Dr. Srivastava. So we are talking about the shape. Shape is all the geometric information that remains after removing all the shape preserving transformations. Yeah. So like translation, scaling, and rotation. So people represent shape in different ways. For example, there can be represented in a discrete way. So here I have an example, which is the leaf. Uh, so it can be represented by a point cloud, or it can be represented by uh, landmarks. But recently, people are more focused on this continuous representation. So basically, we can use the 2D parameters, the curve, to represent the shape. And under this continuous representation, shape is also preserved under this different reparameterization. So this is also known as the registration issue, essentially, which is a point correspondence across different objects. So there is a very uh, popular solution. They use the elastic Riemannian metric to solve this registration issue. Um, the whole framework is simplified by this uh, square root velocity function, SRVF. So the theoretical result tells us under this SRVF representation, the L2 metric is the original um, elastic Riemannian metric for the original curve. Um, in addition, since this metric is preserved under this uh, repair metrization and the rotation group action, uh, and of course, we remove this uh, translation and the scaling. So we can represent the shape by, by this uh, orbit or equivalent class of square bracket Q which contains all the rotations and the repair metrizations of um, the object. And also we have this uh, shape space, uh, the script S. Uh, based on that, we have this shape metric DS, which is, uh, is based on this elastic metric. So this elastic shape analysis family is quite successful over the past decades, but the only applied for this uh, simple object. Uh, I mean, simple objects, they are, they are either in the same topo topological class or they are, have very similar topology. So example include the scalar functions, Euclidean curve, 3D surfaces, and the trees. So, but, um, so here we have um, two examples of geodesics, which represent the shortest path under this elastic metric. So for 2D curves and for 3D surfaces. But we know that in reality, there are much more complex shapes here. So here I list all the different objects from the simple object here to very complex object here. So people, to study simple object, people prefer using geometrical based approaches. But for very complex object, um, the current solution only given in these topological based approaches. So there are very uh, representative work is called persistent homology, um, belongs to this topological data analysis. But essentially, it can extract the certain topological features out of this object. Topological features uh, include the number of the uh, holes, number, number of the loops, uh, and then the, the work is focused on these topological features. I mean, certainly uh, for very complex objects like this snowflake or this uh, picture of our universe, um, it's a good idea to analyze using this very cost way, like topological based approaches. But today I'm going to talk about like for some relatively structured data and a relatively complex object, how do we study their shape in geometrical way? So most specifically, I'm focused on this uh, graphical shapes. Uh, example include this brain arteries, this eye blood vessels, uh, fruit fly veins, and the neurons. So this graphical shape is made up by nodes and, and edges. So nodes is either the junction or the terminal nodes, or uh, um, yes, and the edges is the shape of the 2D of the 3D uh, edges between them. So how do we represent this shape? Um, so as a graph, we certainly uh, represent as a graph, but more specifically, this is the edge attributed graph. So it, it has the edge defined in the shape space. So we represent this graph by its adjacent matrix A for each entry AIJ represent the shape of the edge IJ. 
So I will use this uh, to illustrate the idea. So on the left hand side, we have this uh, graphic object one, two, three. Um, it has three nodes. Um, so on the right hand side, it's the corresponding adjacency matrices. Um, so for example, here, the AIJ, which is representing the shape of the edge, edge uh, uh, A12, A is the shape of the uh, edge 12, which is the, we use the square bracket Q, Q1 to represent the shape of this one. So let's script A to represent the space of all such adjacent matrices. Remember, we have the DS, which is the elastic distance on the shape space. So we can impose the metric on this script A using the sum of square of all the edges and we square root it. So the geodesics, we can also uh, get the geodesics since for each edge, we have the geodesics and there is elastic distance. So we can have the geodesics for the full object uh, by this uh, collection. But there is a uh, one issue for such representation, which is uh, we call this arbitrary node order. So basically, the, so here we have two uh, same uh, object based, I mean, they have the same shape, but they are in the different node order. So as a result, the agency matrices are different. So what we need to do is um, we need to find the permutation matrices P such that we can permute the node order such that they are registered together. So this permutation matrix P is a very special matrix such that uh, every row and every column contains precisely a single one with zero and well s. So the action of this P is given by PAP transpose. Um, essentially is we exchange rows and columns such that we can permute the node order and they are registered together. So how do we, how do we remove this uh, uh, permutation effect? So let us script P to denote the group of all these uh, permutation matrices. And the group action is given by the PAP transpose. So as a result, the shape of uh, the graphic object is actually the orbit under this group action P. Oh, in other words, it's all the, it's the equivalent classes. So basically, it's the site contains all the possible node orders. So the site of the, I mean, all, all the collection of this uh, graphic object, we use the script P to denote this uh, graph shape space but it's, the, it's also the quotient space of the script A modeling out of this uh, script, uh, the group action P. So what is the metric for this space? Since uh, script J is the nonlinear space, but we have the isometry res result. So we can have actually borrow some metric from the outer space. So let me talk about here. So basically the permutation action is an isometric action on the script A the adjacent matrices space. So the isometry means if we permute two adjacent matrix in the same way, the metric DA, which is the, we mentioned before, the sum of square of all the edges and the square root, square root A is preserved um, under the same permutation. So this is called isometric group action. So because this result, we can actually um, borrow the metric or we call this inherit this metric from the outer space script A into the quotient space to script J. The only thing we need to do is we need to optimize this uh, permutation matrix T. So now let's talk about the numerical optimization. So this is called the graph matching algorithm uh, problems. And more specifically, um, people are more formulated into the quadratic assignment problems. Um, so if our agency matrix is the shape space N by N, um, it can be formulated as the Lawler's quadratic assignment problem. So let me use these slides first. So basically, um, given two objects, like a graphic object, A1 and A2. So what we need to do is first to formulate this, uh, uh, we call this affinity, affinity matrix K, uh, which is N squared by N squared matrices. So the diagonal entries encoding the node similarities and off diagonal matrices encoding the, off, uh, the edges similarities. So for example, here, 1a to 1a means uh, 1 register to a, this is the node similarity between 1a and, and a. So 1a to 2b, this is the, um, this is the edge similarity. So um, for example, here, so it means 1 to a, 2 to b, and that means edge 
one, two to edge AB. And here we measure the similarity between shape Q1 and Q8. So as we mentioned before, the shape the edge similarity is uh, uh, measured by this elastic in the product. Um, so we are using the factorized graph matching to optimize this uh, uh, problem. So here, let me show some uh, geodesic exa examples. So um, for the for the left and the right, we have two different object uh, graphic object. So first, uh, this is the shortest path in the adjacent matrices space. So as we can see, since the node is not ordered, um, the the path is actually very messy. However, if we successfully register the node using our algorithms, um, and uh, we not only register the node, but also we register the edges using the elastic Riemannian framework. So as a result, we can much uh, we can observe a much natural deformation uh, from this object to that object. So here we have another geodetic example. So basically, we have uh, two different uh, graphic object. One has a loop, one has not a loop. So uh, the, um, in summary, is the geodesic in J is a much more natural deformation uh, than the geodesic in script A without node ordering. So uh, here we show a real example. We show the geodesic path for two neurons, um, as we can say, a very natural deformation. So since we have developed a metric for these uh, graphical shapes, now we can use this metric to develop some statistical tools. So first, we can define what is the mean graph for these graphical shapes. So the mean graph is a, a very canonical pattern mean. So essentially, we, we minimize the variance or the sum of squares of all the observations. So um, the algorithms we are using, uh, I mean, we, we also develop this algorithm, but essentially we uh, iteratively update this uh, graph matching and the elastic uh, edge registering, and also we do the averaging uh, iteratively. So here we have the in simulation to study the mean of these uh, samples. So we have four observations um, and uh, in different node orders but their mean has the exactly the same same shape which is the point representation for these samples so we can also um, build a graph pca um, so essentially given a, a bunch of like m graphical shape we can first find their culture mean using the algorithm we mentioned before and also we get the match uh, the match the graph so the next the next step is since the graph are registered and each edge are registered. So we can get a shooting vector for every edge on the, on the tangent space of their mean edge. And the collection of all these edges is the shooting vector for this uh, matched graph shape. And as a result, this shooting vector is in the tangent space, is the vector space we can perform the standard PCA. So here, let me show some uh, PCA results using the same data here. Uh, I would like to mention like for this data, they have different node ordering, um, but they have the same main branch. Uh, so the same, the main branch we define here is like one, two, four, six, eight for this one, or two, one, seven, uh, three, six for this one. So the, the main branch are all the same, but about the side branches are all the different. So as a result, we show the variation along the first principal direction. So the middle one is the mean, we perturb this mean, by its um, um, first um, and second, uh, by, 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 you know, my positive and minus, uh, positive and negative one and two uh, square root of the first single value along the first principal direction. So as we can say, the main branches are kept the same all the time, but the variation comes from the side branches. So now let's uh, talk about some uh, real data application. So the real data we are using is we use this uh, brain artery data. So this is the human data. So we divide this uh, brain artery into four components. Um, they are colored in cyan, um, black, green, and blue. And the right circle denotes what is the node, uh, the, the node here. So now I'm going to, uh, so we call this top the left, the bottom, and the right component. So now let's, uh, uh, let me show some results for the left and the right component. 
So first we show some summary statistics for these graphs. So we have 92 subjects. So we have 92 graphical shapes for the left and the right component. So we can essentially how many nodes are there and how many edges are there. Essentially on average they have like 100 nodes um, and the maximum is ar around 200. The minimum of my video is, is around like 50. So they are very complex and large graphs. So first uh, let me show some geodesic for two left component. So on the left hand side, this is the geodesic. We can see how one left component deformed into another left component. Let me show it again. So as you can see, this is a very complex graph. We can observe like some edges are uh, appear and some edges are disappear. So to, bet to better realize it, so what we do is on the right hand side, we show the same geodesic, but only for matched edges. So we can better understand what's going on inside. Okay, so this is uh, another example, but for the right component. So as euro, we show the full geodesic here, and then we show the matched geodesic here. Okay. We also developed, uh, uh, we also computed the mean for the next subject, which is given the middle bounding box and surrounded by the eight samples. We also highlight this, um, their common edges. The common edges is defined in, like if the edge is matched over 60% 60, 60 of time in the red color. So we can find some commonalities across different objects. So this is the uh, uh, mean for the red component for the landed subject. The middle one is the mean surrounded by the eight random samples. So since we have the PCA and we have also have some covariance information, we can do some uh, testing about that. So what we do here is we project this 92 subject into their first principal subspace, you know, from one up to five. And then for these principal scores, what we do is we do the two sample t-test uh, and uh, this whole heading t square test for multivariate statistics. So for the left and right component to test whether male um, brain artery has difference with uh, female brain arteries. So we do observe some uh, low, low p-value like here and here, but overall the, the p-value is relatively large. So we don't observe much gender difference for their shapes for the left and right component. However, we do observe a very strong aging effect here. So what we do is uh, we project uh, the component into the first principal score. And uh, this is scatter plot between first principal score and ages. So as we can see, we can observe a very strong linear correlation between age and first principal score. And uh, the correlation is uh, is high and the p-value is significant. So we obtain the same, exactly the same result, uh, not, I mean, the, the same result um, using the same approach, but they use the TDA, the topological data analysis. So we also verify our finding using these uh, distance matrices. So, so we have 92 subject, so here, we compute their pairwise distance and we, we realize here, given by, you know, this is the 92 by 92 uh, uh, size matrices, distance matrices. So as we can see, like as the uh, age increase, the variability of the distance is also increased. So to better understand this, we also project these distance matrices into low di dimensional space using this MDS, uh, using this MDS plot. So MDS plot is each, uh, each dot represents a subject here. So essentially MDS plot can preserve the distance um, given by these distance matrices as much as possible. So we can observe there is some uh, separation between young and old people. So we also do a formal test about this uh, gender and um, um, I mean, no, we also do a distance-based test to verify this gender and age effect. Um, so what we do here is uh, given is based on these distance matrices. So we randomly uh, assign them into male and female. Uh, this for gender test. Here we randomly assign into young and old uh, label. Uh, so young is defined like uh, less than fifty, and old is defined uh, over than fifty. So and then we calculate the test statistics, and we repeat this procedure for many many times and we get a distribution of these test statistics. And this red dot here, 
represent what is the true label tested statistics. So by doing so, we can obtain what is the p-value for our current uh, true label. So we, as the as euro, we don't observe much strong gender effect here, but the aging effect is very strong. The p-value is very significant. So that is all the talk. Thank you very much.